What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at the PyQt5 designer for making GUI apps with Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at the PyQt5 designer, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is PyQt5 Thursday, and today we're going to start to look at the PyQt5 designer. And this is it right here. It's a really nice drag and drop tool to make GUI apps with Python and PyQt5. Now, you still obviously have to write all the code underneath. So, like, we've got this button here. If you wanted to do something, you still have to write the code to have it do something. And we're going to look at that. But just laying out your GUI putting things where you want, changing colors, adding things, dragging, dropping. This is great for that. And so we're going to be working with this in the next, you know, bunch of videos here going forward, because whenever you're using PyQt5, you're probably going to want to use this thing. Up until now, I've been teaching you just the very basics of PyQt, so you understand what it is and how to write the code for the basic things, the basic widgets, buttons, labels, all those things. Now that we have that basic understanding, we can start to use the PyQt5 designer. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So we need to install this. This does not come with PyQt, and it used to be kind of a hassle to install. Uh, it's actually really easy to install right now, and that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm in my C slash PyQt5 directory. This is the directory we've been using throughout these videos. I've got my virtual environment turned on. Now, it's very important that you have your virtual environment turned on. We want to install these things into the virtual environment. So to install this guy, we just go pip install. And this is Pi QT5 Designer. Now notice the capitalization, capital P, capital Q, and capital D. So Pi QT5 Designer. Now I've already installed this, so it says, hey, you've already installed it, but for you, it'll go through and install. It just takes a couple of seconds. It's not that bad at all. So now we can pip freeze and see, not only do we have Pi QT, we also have Pi QT5 Designer. Right? And now it's at version 5.14.1. If that version changes by the time you watch this video, no big deal. Just whatever the latest version is, is, is fine. Now, it used to be kind of hard to find the designer on your computer once you pip installed it, but they've made it really easy recently. All you have to do is type in designer.exe. Now, you have to be in your Python directory. You've got to have your virtual environment turned on for this to work. And you've also got to have your uh, Windows path set correctly for Python. So when you install Python way back when, there should have been a little checkbox at the bottom of the installation screen that says add Python 3.9 or whatever to path. You make sure that checkbox is checked. If it's not, this is not going to work. You might want to go back and reinstall Python and uh, go through all these steps again to install your virtual environment and all that good stuff so that you can do this. Or you could just Google how to set your path in Python. If you're on a Windows computer. It's pretty easy. You change some settings in your system. I can't show you right now, but you can Google that and it's not that bad. So when we do that, boom, nothing seems to have happened. But in the background here, if we close this, boom, here it is. So this is the latest version of designer was not terminated correctly. That's normal. Click yes. Now I've already had this opened. So actually, let me close this. And let's, let's start all over again. So that we get a fresh screen, come back here, designer.exe, boom, it pops up. Now, here's the screen you will most likely see. It says, what do you want to build? Widget, main window, dialog without buttons. You probably just want a main window to begin with. So let's do create. And there it pops up. So let me just resize this stuff so it's sort of easier for us to go through all of this. And this is the PyQt designer. Very cool. And you can see all the things on the left here that you can add. Here's our layouts, vertical layouts, horizontal layouts, grid layouts, form layouts. Remember in the last couple of videos, we looked at form layouts, we've looked at grid layouts, you know, horizontal and vertical layouts, I think in the very first video I did on PyQt. So there's our different layouts we can use. We have spacers, we have different buttons, there's item views, so list views, tree views, table views, all those good things. We haven't really talked about those yet. Uh, list widgets, tree widgets, there's containers, group boxes, toolboxes, all the things, right? Input widgets, we could scroll down. So combo boxes, text editors, spin boxes, all the things, time editors. Down here we have labels, calendar widgets. And to use these things, it's really just as easy as grabbing whatever you want. For instance, if we want a button, grab push button, bring it over, drop it, boom, there it is. 
Now we can resize this if we want. If we want to change the text, just double click it. Let's go click me. Hit enter, boom, done, right? So really cool if we want to come down here and grab a label, let's do that. And we can resize, change all the things. Let's go, hello world. And now over here on the right hand side, we can change different properties and things like that. So for instance, if we want this text to be bigger, I've clicked on it so it's highlighted, we can come down here to font, click on this guy and change this to whatever we want. So just that easy, same thing here. I want to change this font. There we go. We can move this around a little to sort of center it more. I don't know, <laughs> whatever you like. Now, one thing, these are named generically. So up here, we see the object name, push button, right? That's not a great name. We might want to reference it. So I might say, click me underscore button, All right? Whatever, for here, this label, I might want this to be hello underscore world underscore label, All right? So we wanna reference this later because when we click this button, we want this text to change. So we need to have a name that's more easily recognizable. So go ahead and change that. And really it's just this easy. We, you know, obviously there's more to it, we start getting into more advanced things like colors and adding different things and tweaking different things. But strictly speaking, this is all you really need to do. You just sort of drag things around, position them how you want, and you're good to go. Now, once you have it the way it is, and obviously this is a very basic app and this is just an intro video, so we're just gonna do a very basic app. But once you have this finished the way you want, we come up here and we need to save it. So let's go file, save as, and make sure you're in your correct directory. It, it isn't by default. So I'm in my C drive, we've got our PyQt5 directory, right? And if we come back over here, we see that's C PyQt5. We want it in this directory, in our working directory that has our virtual environment and all the things. So then we can come back here and let's just save this. And you'll notice it's saving it as a .ui file. That's I guess short for user interface, I don't know. But name this whatever you want, I'm gonna call it hello world .ui. So now we can head back over here and we can type in ls and we see we've got this hello world.ui file, right? So, okay, that's great, but now what? How do we run this thing? How do we actually make it work? Now I've got, I've got it here from an old version that I did before this video. We wanna click this and change this to boom. How do we do that? Well, we need to convert this hello world.ui file into a Python file that then we can modify. So to do that, the command is a little weird. It's pi uic5 right? And then dash X stands for executable. And now we need to designate this file. So that would be hello underscore world dot UI. Now dash O, we need to output this thing. We want to output it as hello underscore world dot pi, right? So boom, that's all there is to it. Write this down, copy it, keep it somewhere because you're always going to use this command. A little weird, but you know, it's not too bad. And now if we type in ls, we see we've got this hello world.py file, right? So we can play around with this and do whatever we want. So uh, right off the bat, we could run this. Let's go Python hello underscore world.py. When we do, we get the app. When we click on this button, nothing happens because we haven't programmed it to do anything when we click the button, but the app does work. Uh, so it's kind of cool. So now let's open this and play around with this. But before we open this, I should mention, this is the Git Bash terminal. It's a terminal I always use. Also, you can find a link to the code in the comment section below this video. Also, you can find a link to the PyQt5 playlist to see all the other PyQt5 videos that we have. So, okay, back to Sublime Text. Let's go ahead and open this. Go File, Open, Navigate to our C PyQt5 directory, find that hello world.py file and open it. And here it is. So there's some comments always at the top of these. I always delete that. And this is the file that that, command generated that big long, where did it go? This thing, this pi uic5 dash x dash hello world dot ui dash o dot hello pi, that generated this file. And you could look through here and it sort of makes sense. We've got our, our main class, right? Our main windows. And here are the things like the click me button. That's our button. That's what we named it, right? The hello world label. 
That's our label. That's what we named it, right? So we could play around with this in the normal way we would do any PyQt coding like we've learned in the previous videos. So what I want to do is come down here and create a function that we can use whenever we press the button. So let's define, I'm going to call it press it. We want to pass in self. Now I can go self dot. Now what did we call our label? There it is. Hello world label. Let me just copy this. And now we want to dot set text. We've done this in previous videos and I'm just going to set this to boom. Right? All right. So maybe I'll comment press the button function. So just a very basic function that changes the label when we press the button. So now we just need to come up to our button and find where we defined it. And that looks like right here. Click me button QT widgets. Take you push button. And here we just need to go clicked equals. So here we want to go Lambda. And now this looks like a capital L. This is a lowercase L. Sublime just does this drives me crazy. <laughs> but that's definitely a lowercase L. So now we just want to pass self dot press it. And that's a function we probably want to pass in. I don't think we need to pass in self. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this. Now we can come back over here and run this guy python hello world dot pi. And when we do we see this click me boom changes to boom, and we're done. So obviously a very, very simple app. But you know, in this video, I really more want to talk about the designer and get it set up, get you started with it, get it installed, show you how to use it, show you how to create a very simple app like we did, convert that app into an actual Python file. And then from there, you take it away, you do whatever you want. In our case, you know, we made this very basic press it function. So we press the button, the text changes to boom, right? So, uh, but basically, this is very different than the Python code we've been looking at in a few videos up until this one. But not really, if you really kind of look in here, you'll you'll notice most of the same things like this QT widgets. In other videos, I I imported the QT a little bit differently. I imported PyQt5 as like QTW. And then we used QTW dot whatever in our code, right? They're just not doing that. It's it works the same way. It's just a matter of style depending on how you do that. We'll just go with this from here on out. But really, other than that, things are pretty much the same. We were looking at some things that we haven't quite discussed yet in prior videos, like setting point sizes, resizing window things explicitly doing stuff like this. And we'll get into all this going forward set status bar. Uh, but in this video, just a quick intro on the PyQt designer, really cool, a lot of fun and uh, should be fun on the next I don't know, dozen or so videos playing around with this thing. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code UT1 to get $30 off memberships to pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.